Happy Thursday, everybody. I pray all is well. My name is Michael Gibson. I'm talking about why I go to church. I'm going to share it out in a couple groups. Just give me a second. Uh, as you can see, I'm not I'm not at home. I'm out, I'm out on the road again today, but I pray all is well. So I'm going to log in on my phone real fast and make sure everything is reading and sounding the way that I need it to sound. And then after I hit the share, I'm going to get started. So you're going to hear my volume just a second just to make sure that is good. So everything is good. I'm going to hit the share button and we're going to get started. Again, I pray everybody is having a blessed day as I'm having a blessed day. It's always good. They have to have the opportunity just to come talk about the little things that God laid on your heart. And you know that I'm I'm always just amazed just how good God consistently is. Just how good he consistently is. He, 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 you know, there's a, a, a saying that um to over promise. No, don't don't over promise and under deliver. This guy, he never does that. Everything that he that he says comes to pass in in due time, in due season. And I'm beginning to recognize that more and more every day. Like I said, that it's just a blessing and an honor to be able to come forth and to, to speak. You know, the things that God laid on my heart. Again, I'm going to share this out in a couple of groups. I'm not in my normal location, and I was having trouble actually getting online today. So I'm a little bit behind schedule, but I'm just I'm grateful that God just even allowed me the moment to, to get on here, to get it to work, and, and to get it started. And again, thank you to those that may watch now, may watch later. But I tell you that God has been doing some truly amazing, amazing things in my life. And it's it's rewarding. And that's the word that describes it best for me. It is truly rewarding when God comes through like he said he would. Man makes all kind of promises, but they don't always bag it up. But I tell you that God has been backing up his word in my life every day. And he's exceeding my expectations. And he's doing things that I'm like, wow, I'm just, I just, I'm just amazed. I'm amazed by him. Can I say that? That I, that I am amazed by him. I'm amazed by my God, even though I know that he makes these promises. They are yes and amen. I know that he would do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask, even think, even though I know it. When I see it come to pass, it just, wow, God, you did it again. You did it again. And I tell you that when God really shows up in your life, for real, for real, it makes all the difference when God shows up. Man can show up, but when God shows up, everything changes. It becomes a game changer. And God has been doing some game changers things in my life. And this is why I'm to the point where I can't go back. I don't want to go back. Because life on the other side is not as good as life on this side. I try life on the other side, and I tell you that it wasn't as rewarding. It didn't bless me. It didn't do the things that God has been doing in my life presently. And this is why I keep coming on week after week, because God keeps doing great things. But the topic that I would like to talk about today is I go to church. I found the missing link. This is the reason why I go to church. I found the missing link. I I found what was causing me not to have the success that I wanted. We think that doing our own plan and going our own way, those are good ideas, but they're not God ideas. And when you connect with a God idea, the acceleration to completion is exponential. And I've just been blessed with the opportunity to be connected to some God ideas. And it's been wonderful being able to be connected to God ideas. Yeah, I said God ideas. You know, I've had some ideas that's been my own and they didn't come to fruition. But now that I'm kind of being connected to some God ideas, I believe I found the missing link, what has been missing and why that I wasn't as successful as I thought that I should be. Now, I don't have my... Um, 
second monitor with me. So I'm gonna have to look over here because this is where my scriptures are. So I'm going to pull up some scriptures. I'm going to read them to you. And I hope that you track with me and that it just gives you something to think about. I mean, the greatest thing I can do is help you to change the way you think and to give you a different perspective because how you view life is how you're going to go through life. If you view life negatively, you will go through life negatively. If you view life positively, you will most likely have a positive outcome because your mind is more powerful than you think. Your mind is the thing that allows you to call things forth and bring them to you. Or your mind is the thing that allows your vocal cords to speak the negativity that pushes things away from you. So things are just as close or as far as you speak it. You have what you say. God said you can have what you say. Many of us are busy saying what we have. Thus, we have nothing. I can't, never could. It's here. It's here. This is what's going to change the outcome of your life. This is what's going to change the course of, of, of the chart. Uh, it's going to change the course in the direction of, of the boat that you're charting out in the river. This is, this, this little thing, this tongue, it's talking about who can tame it. And as I begin to learn to tame my mind, tame my thoughts, tame my thumb, uh, uh, tongue, God has been doing some great and tremendous things. So I'm going to take you to this passage of scripture as, as found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9. And it would help if I was in Corinthians and not Chronicles. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9. And as I mentioned before, I do not have my dual screen, so I will not be able to pull it up on the monitor. But if you got your word, the most powerful thing, you can actually pull it up and read it with me. Uh, but the scripture is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9, and it reads as follows. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have it entered into the heart of men the thing which God has prepared for them that love him. I'm going to read it one more time. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9 reads, But it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. The missing link that I found, I have been discovering that God had already prepared it for me. Before God sent me down here to spend some time on planet Earth, he already prepared it for me. He does so many things with the end in mind that once he sent us down into the simple realm, it was already finished. It is up to us to figure out how to get the finished product. I thought that it was my job to create the product. I thought it was my job to help God with the process. Now I'm beginning to see that it is my job is to listen to the direction that God gives me so that I can get the finished product. So when it says, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it, has it entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And the part of the scripture, God has prepared for them that love him. See, I thought eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, that it will be something that I never heard of and that I had to do all this stuff. Then I came to the realization that God already heard of it. God prepared it. So God already knows what's there for me. It's just according to my faith, be it unto me. So the missing link that I had to begin to understand is that this whole time that I've been trying to run and figure out on my own, all I needed was God. When you make God the missing link, it's amazing how smooth your life will go. When you get on a bicycle, the bicycle has a chain. And if you've ever been on a bicycle and you've been riding, and sometimes the chain pops. And when the chain pops, what ends up happening, you're pedaling, but you're not going anywhere. You're not moving anything, even though you're doing a lot of work. See, some of us mistake work with movement. So you can do a lot of work and go nowhere. So just because you're busy working don't mean you're moving. And God's beginning to show me that I don't need to spend my whole time spinning and pedaling doing my own thing because I'm working, but I'm not moving. 
Too many of us are working and not moving. We were staking, working for movement. See, when God begins to position you, you'll start moving faster because you'll be going down the path of least resistance. I didn't say there wouldn't be trial. I didn't say there wouldn't be travail, but you're going down a path that has least amount of resistance or you're going down a path that God has already prepared for you. So God already knows where the pitfalls are. God already knows where the stumbling blocks are. God already knows where the rough terrain. So he's going to prepare you for that journey. See, the missing link that I found was that I was doing it without G-O-D. I was doing it on my own because I thought eyes hadn't seen. So, so God didn't know what he had for me. No, God knew what he had for me. It's just that I wasn't positioned to get what he had for me. So what I've done differently now is positioning myself to be where God wants me to be in the time that God wants me to be there. I'm learning to get the mail when it's delivered. You know, when you go on vacation and you try to get your mail, you can't get your mail and the mailbox gets full and full and full and full because you're not there. And sometimes you can't get the mail because the mail carrier can no longer put the mail in the mailbox. See, sometimes God has been sending us some, some mail, but because we haven't taken out the packages that were delivered, we can't get. There's no room for the new package. The missing link. I go to church because I, I found the missing link. I begin to understand that God has already prepared and made it, made it ready for me. So when I begin to read this passage of scripture, I'm going to take it to in Matthew. It's found in Matthew chapter 19, verse number 26. Let me get there. Again, my, my Bible's on this side, so I got to go and look on this screen. I can't look straight ahead. So Matthew chapter 19, verse number 26, and it reads as this. It says, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So the missing link that I found is that God already prepared it. God spoke in his word in the red letter that all things are possible. So the reason that I don't have it is because I haven't been able to receive it or believe it to get it. So as I've been looking through the annals of time, trying to figure out why have I been moved, how, why have I been working, but there's been no movement. It seems like there's no progress because the chain was off the crank. Like I said, when you ride a bicycle and the chain jumps off the crank, you'll be pedaling, but you won't be moving. And the crazy thing is, is that when the chain gets off the crank, there's no resistance. So you're actually pedaling a lot faster than you normally would. And some of us are pedaling and working so hard, but we're not moving because we're not on the crank with God. We're, we're missing the link. And the link that we're missing is that we don't consult God about what we're doing. We're having good ideas, but they're not God ideas. And the the pivotal foundation scripture that I want to really get you to is right here. It's found in Romans. So again, go to Romans chapter 10, verse number eight. And this is, this is the formula. This is the formula that I'm beginning to understand that this is what I need to have success in my life. This is where I need to be to get God flowing flowing in my life, flowing to be in tune and touch. I spoke about that a few weeks ago about being in tune and touch with God. Part of, the, part of the way that you become in tune and touch with God is to understand this link. Now that I understand this link, I have more movement with less work. More movement with less work. Some of us have more work, but no movement. You have so much work because you are working outside of God's parameters. We got to get back in tune and touch with God's settings and some of those things that he prepared for you. He already prepared it and, and he, he already has it there for you. So this is the missing link. It's found in Romans chapter 10, verse number eight. And it said, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. The word is nigh thee. The word has to be in two places. It has to be in thy mouth and in 
thy heart. That is the word of faith. So I had, I had, I had it in my head. Had it in my head, but I didn't have it in my heart. Your, your heart is the birthplace of all your increase. See, your heart gives your mouth the okay to speak. And when, and when you have the word in your head and not in your heart, then, 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 then the devil really has your tongue. He mutes you. He keeps you from speaking because you really don't believe it. But the things that, that you really believe, you just let it flow off, off your tongue. And the missing link that I discovered is that the word wasn't in my heart. It wasn't in my mouth, but it was in my head. I had head knowledge. I didn't let the word get rooted and grounded in my heart. And it says that the enemy comes for the word's sake. So what I had to do was stop letting my natural mind limit God and actually get the word in my heart and in my mouth. When we get the word near us, we'll discover that more things will start working better for us. So the missing link that I found is that the word was not nigh me. See, when we say nigh me, he doesn't naturally mean or literally mean that the Bible is next to you. See, some of us, we ride with the Bible in our car. We got the Bible on our phone. We, we got the Bible in the, in the house. The Bible's in the church, but we haven't become a living epistle. The Bible's not in our heart. So when, when trials come and when the enemy come and, and when the enemy came at Jesus, he said, it is written. So you got to be able to say the word of God. So in order for you to say the word of God, he said, to make your way prosperous, right? He said, day and night, night and day, the laws have I written in my heart that I might not sit against God. He told us to write it on the tables of, of, the ta of our eyelids, all the stuff God has been saying. And I thought that, that I could have God on the peripheral, that, that I could have God in my, in my notes section. I thought that, that I, I could do all of that, not realizing that in order for me to have success, I had to have it readily available. I had to start digesting this word and start let, letting it come out and go back in. I had to start really feasting and dining on the word. It says those that hunger and thirst after God will be fed after righteousness. And what was happening, I wasn't really that hungry. I wasn't that hungry because I was putting my power down. Yeah, I was putting the power down. So we want to be powerful without the power. The power is in the word. So you think you can have power and do all things through Christ who strengthens you, but you don't bring Christ with you because you don't know who Christ is and you don't know the order and in, in the in the way that Christ operates. So I found the missing link. And the missing link was for me to literally get this word in my heart. And in my mouth so that when when situations pushes me to believe, I begin to speak what God says and not what I think about it. There's been so many times that I spoke on how I felt about it, but I didn't speak on how God said it was going to be. So. Now the question becomes, if all things are possible and God already made these things before he sent you, it said it is the word of faith that we preach, the word of faith that we preach. So you got to have faith. So you might be wondering, how does one obtain faith? Just stay in the same passage of scripture, Romans chapter 10, and you go down verse number 17, and it says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We want to get God's best, but we don't want to be in the place where the word of God is being discussed. We want to get God's best, but we don't want to consult God to find out where the best is. They say the gold is at the end of the rainbow. I'm telling you that your blessing is at the end of your obedience to God. There's many rainbows, pot of goals for us if we actually do what the word says to do. Why do I keep saying do what the word says to do? So there's been some doors opened up in my life recently that 
I wouldn't be able to do on my own, but it's God opening up doors and it's God opening up doors because I had just become obedient in speaking and saying when God tells me to speak and say. So when I tell somebody, if you want me to be in this place, I said, if you want me to speak, I only speak hope, faith, and love. On Ellen, you're right. Creating me a clean heart, oh God. And renew. Look, look. I said, this is what what you got. What you got to do. If you want me to speak, I cannot be who I am. And who I am is a person that speaks on faith, hope, and love. This is this is what I do. I believe that God has created me to do this. So you can't ask me not to speak on vision. You can't ask me not to speak on faith. You can't ask me not to. T- to, to say that God is not good and that God is able. You, you can't invite me to be on your platform. And there was a time that I would want to not, not say that that's who I was because I thought that I needed to do all of this to fit in, to, to get in, not realizing the reason why I couldn't get in is because God was my access. See, we want to get in, and when we get into places and God is not our access, that's how we get into trouble. That's how we get to start doing a lot of work with no movement. Yes, you can climb up the ladder corporately, but that doesn't mean you're positioned divinely. I'd rather be divinely positioned than corporately connected. I just began to see that the missing link was in the church, and this is why I go to church. Because this is faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But so many people keep want to walk away from church. So many people want to say that I'm losing my religion. So many people want to say that I'm spiritual. So many people want to just say, God, my question is, what God are you serving? There's many type of gods. But he said, I sit in the valley of the gods. He said that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So so who are you confessing is Lord? As I begin to go down this course in my life, I begin to really recognize that I have to distinguish myself to let them know who my God is. So if your God is dead, you can try mine. If your God is not meeting your needs, you can Try mine. Since I beloved, it, above all, I wish that you were prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. He says, my peace I give unto you, not as man give it. And I begin to understand that peace. God said, my shalom, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing out of place. And those things that are out of place, it says, lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And what I begin to recognize is that things that has been out of place, they've been out of place because I didn't allow God access in that area. I was trying to fix it on my own. The missing link was I didn't have the word in my heart and in my mouth. I had it in my head. And now that I know that those areas where I don't have the faith to to pull down the thing that God already made ready, I have to get in the place because iron sharpens iron. To hear the testimonies, to, to, to allow God to speak through the vessels that he sent. So many people keep saying that there's no apostles and there's no prophets and there's no this, but you believe in a pastor. So you call him God, and God said he sent the five-fold or seven-fold ministry if you want to add government to help. But if he spent, sent these five-fold ministry gifts for the perfecting of the saints, for the maturing of the saints, so how can we have one without the other? This is why I acknowledge these things, and this is why I'm beginning to say, okay, God, You're going to be God in all things, not just some things. So I go to church because I found the missing link. And that missing link was actually God himself. So faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if you go down, it says, but I say in verse number 18, it says, but I say, had they not heard? Yes, verily, they sound went into all the earth and their words unto the end of the world. So he was asking Have people not heard this gospel? I I want you really to think about really having the word in your heart and what that really means. When you have this word in your heart and not just in your head, it just don't get in there by accident. 
you learn the words to songs through repetition. You hear it over and over and over and over again. Even when you're unintentionally listening, how many jingles you know the words to? And you don't even know why you know the words to it. It's because your subliminal or subconscious mind is always working. We have to create an atmosphere for God to speak. An atmosphere for God to speak. That means some of your background music might need to be the word. The things that you meditate on and think upon and ponder the most might need to be the word. This is why we know obey your thirst and you're not you when you're hungry. This is why we know about Progressive and State Farm. We know this because we see that commercial over and over and over again. And even when we're not paying into the attention to that commercial, that commercial is still, we're still hearing it. So you, this is something that you got to rehear and rehear and rehear and rehear and rehear. The moment that you say, I heard that before, is the opportunity for you to miss something that God is trying to tell you. We can't let the word get old. We can't let the word get stale. So if you're struggling with having the faith that you need to pull down the thing that God has made ready for you, when I begin to really grasp that God has already made it ready for me, I, I understand what sweatless victory really means now. I've been fighting to open a door that wasn't meant for me. It says that God will open a door that no man can shut. That no man can shut. But what happens when you open a door that wasn't meant for you? You spend a lot of time struggling <laughs> trying to get the door open. And it's hard sometimes to shut a door that wasn't meant for you. God has opened up some doors for me. And there was no work required. And I had to spend time <clears throat> to show God that I was worthy of that door, that I would be faithful to the thing that he's called me to do. So don't misinterpret what I'm saying. But when God opens up doors, he opens up doors to those that are faithful, to those that are faithful to the call. So I go to churches because I found the missing link. So I want to take you to this passage in Luke. It's Luke chapter 17. And it starts at verse number five. So it says, the word got to be nigh thee, the word of faith that we preach. So we go to Luke chapter 17, verse number five. If you don't have the faith to pull it down, you can simply do this. Luke chapter 17, verse number five. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. <clears throat> it's amazing. The apostles were chosen by God. These apostles walk with God. These the apostles saw the miracles. But yet, they had to go to God and say, increase our faith. It's okay to be at a place where your faith is not at the level it should be. That's okay. It's not okay for you not to recognize who can increase your faith and how to get an increase in your faith. The apostles knew that they needed more faith and they needed an upgrade in their faith. They had to go to God to get an upgrade. If you need an increase in your faith, you're not going to get the God kind of faith outside of God. This is why I go to church. I don't need an increase in my faith in Oprah, Steve Harvey, Ellen DeGeneres. They can give me information 
And they can actually give me belief. But they're not going to give me the faith to pull down the things that God has made and, and prepared for me. The things that God has prepared for me, only God is the, the one that can increase my faith to get it. And the vessels that God has sent to teach me the word, to get the word in my heart and in my mouth, I can get it. The solution to your problem is in the man and women of God. But yet we shun and run from the men and women of God. We're, we're running from the very thing that can give us access. We are running from the very link that can close our chain. As I told you, when you get on a bicycle and that bicycle jumps off the crank, you'll do a lot of work with no movement. Better yet, if that, if that chain loses a link, you can't go anywhere. It's hard to ride a bicycle with no chain. So if you're missing a link, that's a problem. It's hard for you to, pro, to, to progress in life because you're doing it outside of God. You, you need more faith to get the thing that God has prepared for you, and you can sort all these other resources that God never sent to you. And you wonder why they're, that you're not getting the results that God intended for you because you're getting information outside of God. There's no other way for me to say it. It seems like all the time now when I go on my social media, there, there is like a declaration for everyone to be inclusive. Everyone can, no, this is an, is, is an exclusive club. This is an exclusive club. It's, it's like, so I recently joined a gym, right? And I go to the gym. Now imagine if I drove to the gym, got my gym outfit on, got my heart rate monitor on. I get my pre-workout thing ready. I, I get all this stuff. Okay, I do all this stuff. I drive to the gym. I open up the doors and, and, they, and they greet me. But then I sit down and never get on any of the equipment. Would I lose any weight? I'm going to say it again. If I join a gym, drive to the gym, get dressed for the gym, take my pre-workout drink, and I go in the facility and never get on any of the apparatuses. This is what many of us are doing in the body of Christ. We're going to the church. We're listening to, you know, gospel music or we're listening to, to podcasts and, you know, live streams, but there's no application. There's no application. No application, no change. I can stare at that treadmill all I want. I will not get in any better cardiovascular help if I don't put one foot in front of the other. I get healthier as I use the treadmill. You'll get more faith as you use the faith. You'll see more activation as you apply the word. This word is a living, breathing thing that you have to apply to your life, that you actually have to put into practice. It's not enough for me to go to the gym and just look at the equipment. And then for me to complain that this gym isn't helping me. Of course, the gym isn't helping you because you're not using the equipment. Of course, the word is not benefiting you because you're not applying it. So we're blaming everybody but ourselves. I can, drive, I can drive to the gym and the coach can rah rah and cheer me on, but if I don't get myself on that treadmill and start using it, my heart never gets conditioned to get stronger. So if you pray, God, increase my faith, but you don't put yourself in a position for your, your faith to be pushed or your faith to be stretched or your word level to be challenged, how, how can it get better because muscles grow by tearing the fiber 
of the muscle. That's how growth happens, by putting your muscles under resistance. That's how it happens. We want to say we have this word, but we, we don't want to be in a position where someone challenges us to see where our word level is. We, we don't want to get put in places where our faith can be tested. Well, how do I know how much faith you have? How do I know how much faith health you have without putting your faith under stress? Because when I get on the treadmill, the thing that it does is it puts my heart under stress. It's causing me, the faster I spin up that treadmill, the higher the incline, the more, the more work is being put on my heart. But the more time I put my heart under this work level, on Ellen, precisely, it's time to stop playing church and apply the word. We have too many playing it. They talk about it, but they don't want to be about it. If you be about it, your life will change. It's it's like on oh, Ellie, it's it's like a manual going to the gym and, and never shooting the ball. How do you make more baskets? Shoot more baskets. We want our faith to increase, but we don't want to use it. We, we, we don't want to challenge God to do things. Oh, if God really wanted it. He said, the violent take up by force. We, 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 we got to start using the fourth force of our faith and putting ourselves in, in, a, in a spot where it's tested. I see the video of him shooting. I see the video of the drill day after day, day after day, night after night. And we don't apply that same thing to the word of God. I love when I see the athletes compete because they go, they go and they work on it hour after hour after hour. And then they go practice their skill set. And if, and if the skill set did, didn't perform to the level, they go back and learn. When was the last time you went to a Bible study and actually got engaged to say, hey, I don't understand this scripture? Or you got in a group and say, what does the scripture really mean? And how do I apply this? When, when do we actually work out the word? When do we actually get to the place where we literally work out the word? The word is not going to work for you if you don't work it. Missy Elliott, work it. You got to work it. You got to work the word. Work the word means you have to apply the word. If you want to get heart healthy, if you want to have faith health, you got to start using your faith. You got to start going after some of the things that God has shown you. You got to start doing that. I'm starting to do that and I'm, start, I'm starting to see a change. This is the last passage of scripture. Romans 8.28. And it reads as follows. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. The part that I always like to point out, it says, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All things may not work out for your good if you're not doing stuff according to God's purpose. So I can't lie to you. We like to quote that, that all things work together for the good. Well, if you're not doing something for his purpose, it may not work out for your good. I'm not saying it can't end good, but I'm just saying that God is only obligated to back his promises. So I want to close with this. Don't mistake work for movement. When the chain gets off the crank of the bicycle, now there's no resistance and you can pedal. Some of us are on life hamsters, hamsters wheel. We've been going in a circle and we've been going really fast. And it's because we actually got off the crank. Our link is messed up. Our, our chain is off the crank. If we slow down and consult God for a minute, you'll find that your life 
of being more fulfilled. Serving God is work. I'm not going to lie to you. Because it takes work to get the word. What did I tell you? In your heart. And in your mouth. It takes work. Because the world has programmed you not to believe in God. The world is programming you to believe in your own ability. We worship the creature more than the creator. We idolize the creature more than the creator. We have people that say, you know, I want to thank God. But if you really wanted to thank God, you would thank God through the life that you live. We got to start getting back to just really understanding that we have to apply the word. No application, no change. I go to church because I found the missing link. The missing link for me is that I didn't have the word in two places. I had it in my head, but it was not in my heart and it was not in my mouth. And the reason why the word was not in my head, my heart, and in my mouth is because I just didn't spend enough time in the word. You know what? I'm going to take you to this final scripture. I'm going to read the scripture. I just feel led to read it. Because so, so many, you know, are running to hear a word instead of just reading the word. You want you, you want to you want to be prophesied over because you want God to bless you. In reality, the Bible says that the word is a more sure word of prophecy. So I'm going to take you to this final passage of scripture, and I want you to think about this. It's found in Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. It reads as follows. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So the key, it says that thou may observe to do. Observe to do means to apply it. And then it says, and thou shalt make thy way prosperous. See, God has already made the way, but now it's up for us to make our own way. And the way you make your own way is that you're observed to do, meaning that you actually apply the word that you meditate in the day and night. And you'll be less afraid to apply the word because the more you study the word, the more apt you are to actually believe that it works. To believe that it works. Some of us don't believe that it works because we don't understand that all of God's promises are yes and amen. And that God said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. That doesn't mean that challenging times won't come, but it's letting you know that God has a plan where he's going to take care of you. We're human, so, so we're in a body that's corruptible. But I'm telling you that with the word that we read is an incorruptible word. Incorruptible word. The, the word that we read is a word that has already defeated hell, death, and the grave. The word that we read is, is the word that was in the beginning. The word that we read is a word that is risen. The word that we read sent the spirit to reside inside of us. So you got to connect all the dots through all the places in the scriptures, but you're not going to be able to connect the dots and all the places in the scriptures if you don't, if you're not in the environment and you don't create an atmosphere. So I will close with this. Commit to five more minutes in your word every day. Commit to 10 more minutes every day. That's 70 more minutes a week. If I go to the gym and I never get on the treadmill, I don't get any cardiovascular benefit by looking at it. If you just go to church and you never apply it, all you did was spend your gas money. You may have shouted and got an aerobic exercise, but God is more than an aerobic exercise. God is looking for you to actually see your life changed. And this is why I come on here just trying to give you different ways to look at it. This is Michael Gibson, and it's why I go to church. 
I go to church because I found the missing link. This message has blessed you. I ask that you share it out. Have a great day. Thank you.